Notes 2a.5b, solve the exponential equations. The Algebra 2 Standard 5b is formulate exponential and logarithmic equations that model real-world situations, including exponential relationships written in recursive notation. Let's look at the definition of a logarithm. Log b of b to the x power equals x. Those cancel. b to the log b of x power equals x. The base and the log cancel out. And then the natural log of x equals log base e of x. Inverses. We have our power inverse. If x to the nth power equals y, then the nth root of y equals x. And then we have our exponential inverse. If log b of x equals y, then b to the y power equals x. Let's solve this first example. 3 to the negative 3b power is equal to 243. Let's log 3 each side. That gets rid of the base, and so we have negative 3b equals log 3 of 243. Well, 3 to some power equals 243 exactly. Uh, let's see, 3 to the fifth power. Let's double check that. So 3, 3. That's 243. Okay, that's 5 times. So we have negative 3b equals 5. Divide by negative 3. And so we have b equals negative 5 thirds. Let's look at the next one. 13 to the nth power equals 95. So we have log 13, log 13, n equals log base 13 of 95. Now, let's just say you can't use the Desmos calculator or something. You're only limited to a calculator without log with special bases. We'll change it with the change of base formula. And then we have log 95. Actually, let's just put ln. ln 95 over ln of 13. Now, I'll give you the same thing. Let's plug that in and approximate it. So, I have ln of 95 divided by uh, ln of 13. And then enter. Okay, we get about 1.78. So your answer would be all of these. So it's this, if you want to put it into a basic calculator, this, and if you want to approximate in that calculator, be about this. All right, let's look at the third example. 13 to the 2th power plus 10 equals 17. First, we want to isolate the exponent part. Okay, let's log 13 each side. So we get 2n equals log 13 of 7. Divide by 2. So n equals log 13 of 7 over 2. We can rewrite that using the change of base formula to ln of 7 over ln of 13. And we're multiplying that by 2. And let's put that in the calculator to approximate it.
and then we get about 0.38. If you ever want to check your answer with Desmos, you can always look at that. So we have log 13 of 7 all over 2. It gives you about the same thing. Okay, let's look at the next example. 2.4 times e to the 4n plus 5 minus 4 equals 44. Add 4. Divide by 2.4. You get 20. We're going to take ln of each side, and there's no uh, converting needed here since ln is a regular log. So subtract 5 and divide by 4. And then we'll put it in the calculator. The 20 ln minus 5, and then divide that by 4. We get about negative 0.5. Here's some application to these formulas. So we have compound interest formulas. We have to solve for A, the amount, P, the principal initial value, R, the rate, and T, for time. We also have contiguous compounding. Compound interest is usually for interest, so then contiguous compounding is for biological processes such as bacteria growth. Let's look at this example. Molly invests $1,342 in a retirement account with a fixed annual interest rate of 9% compounded three times per year. What will the account balance be after 13 years? So for each of these questions, you will identify all the value, the variables except for one. So they invested $1,342, that's the principal amount. The rate is as a decimal in standard form. The number of times compound is 3 and the time is 13 years. So we'll plug it into the formula for A. So we have 1,342 and then 1 plus 0 0.09 over 3 to the 3 times 13 power. And that's what A is going to equal. So from there you just plug it into a calculator. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And then to get the expo you press the caret button. It's that uh, upside down V. And we get about $4,250.15. Let's look at the next one. Stephanie invests the sum of money in a retirement account with a fixed annual interest rate of 3% compounded bi-monthly. After 15 years, the balance reaches 
$3,582.71. What was the amount of the initial investment? So we're looking for the principal amount. So the rate was 3% as a decimal in standard form. That's 0 0.03. Buy monthly. Well, there's 12 months of the year. And buy means two. So there's two times each month. So that'd be 24 altogether. We have 15 years. And then the amount is $3,582.71. So we're going to plug it into the formula with P. Uh, P equals A. And then all over the one plus the rate over twenty four, twenty four times fifteen. Check to make sure that it's put it correctly, and then you would type that to the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. And then that's about $2,285.08. Amanda invests six thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars into a retirement account with a fixed annual interest of three percent compounded seasonally. How long would it take for the account balance to reach eleven thousand seventy-two dollars and thirty cents? So we have the principal amount. We have the interest rate, and seasonally means each season. There's four seasons in a year. We don't know what the time is. We do know the amount now. So we're going to plug it into the formula with T solved. Let's go ahead and write that equation right there. And plug it in. So let's go ahead and plug this into the formula. So we have log of 11,072.3 over 6,235 all over 4 times log of 1 plus 0 0.03 over 4. And that equals T. And we'll plug this into the calculator to get our answer. It looks like we have 18.999, so well, that'd be rounding to 19. So about 19 years. All right, let's look at this one. Jimmy invests $5,388 into a savings account 
with the fixed annual interest rate compounded semi-annually. After 12 years, the balance reaches $13,811.08 was the interest rate of the account. So we'll write our givens. Semi-annually means twice a year. And then we're going to use this formula to find R. So we have 100 because we're changing it to a percentage times 2 times 13,811.08 over 5,388. And then this is raised to the N, 1 over NT power, which is 24, and then minus 1. Okay, let's plug that into the calculator. And then that would be about 7.999%, so that would be about 8%. Now let's look at this one. A biologist is researching a newly discovered species of bacteria. At time t equals zero hour, she puts 100 bacteria into a petri dish. Four hours later, she measures 750 bacteria. Assuming exponential growth, what is the growth constant for the bacteria? Write your answer as a percentage. So you will use your contiguous compounding formula. And we're going to identify each variable, except for one. So the original amount was 100 bacteria. We don't know what the rate is. We do know the time was four hours, and then there were 750 bacteria. So we're going to plug it into this formula right here. 100 times ln of 750 over 100 divided by 4. Let's plug that in. And we get 50.37. Now, for compounding problems, the only formulas they'll normally give you is this formula and this formula, where they have A solved for you. The rest of these formulas, you could derive from the formula they give you by solving for that particular variable using logarithmic and exponential properties from before. As an added exercise to this, see if you could derive these formulas from this original formula. See if you get the same thing, except for the R equation you will have a hundred there, except for we convert to a decimal, or convert to a percentage.
The rest of these notes is written for you. Let's briefly go over what it says. Geometric, a pattern that involves repeated multiplication or division. These patterns are exponential. A geometric sequence. The explicit formula is an equals the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. And the recursive formula is f of n equals f of n minus 1 times r. To get the common ratio given two terms of geometric sequence, you could plug it into this formula right here. r equals a of y over a of x to the 1 over y minus x power. So x and y are n values. And then a of y and a of x are a n values. The finite geometric series is the sum of terms in a limited sequence. So we have the summation from i equals 1 to n of ai equals a times 1 minus r to the nth power all over 1 minus r. And then for infinite geometric series, it's the sum of terms in a limited sequence. And then the common ratio must be less than 1. We have the summation from i equals 1 to infinity of ai equals a over 1 minus r. r must be less than 1. Specifically, the absolute value of r has to be less than 1. Like, for example, if r is negative 2, it still wouldn't work. Okay, let's look at this uh, example right here. For a certain drug to have the desired healing effect and be safe, the amount in a person's system should be between 110 and 126 micrograms. After 12 hours, the amount of a dosage of a drug left in the body is 80% of the original dosage. Each dosage of the drug delivers 25 micrograms to the body. A. Assume a person receives one dosage of the drug every 12 hours. Write a geometric series representing the amount of the drug in the person's system after n dosages. So the answer would be S of n equals 25 times 1 minus 0.8 to the nth power over 0.2. Using this formula above, A is the dosage every 12 hours. R is the percentage of the amount of dosages left, and n is the number of dosages taken. This is a finite geometric series, so that's why we use this formula right here. B. When, if ever, would the amount of the drug in a person's system be greater than 110 micrograms? So we're going to set this greater than to 110. So we're going to solve for n. So write our given, divide uh, 25 by 0.2 to get this number, divide each side by 125, subtract 1 from each side to get rid of this one, divide by negative 1 to get rid of this negative. You flip this uh, relation symbol. Now it's going to be less than. You're going to take the natural log of each side and then divide by the natural log of 0.8 on each side and then evaluate with a calculator. They'll never expect you to evaluate those without a calculator. If you're not allowed to have a calculator for these kinds of problems, you'll just leave it in the exact form. C. Will the amount of the drug in a person's system ever be greater than 126 micrograms? Explain your reasoning. 25 over 0.2 is greater than 126. Now, this is false. 
25 divided by 0 0.2 is 125. It's less than 126. The largest sum possible is this since the sum of the geometric series is this way it has infinite terms. So you'll plug it into this formula. So A is 25, and then 1 minus R would be 0.2. So that basically means if the patient takes a dosage only once after each 12 hours, they cannot possibly overdose on it.